Monster Game Night is a dark comedy actual play podcast that contains graphic violence, crude language, tasteless jokes, and awful puns. This show is not appropriate for children, and adults can find content warnings in our episode descriptions. Welcome to our Tiny Dungeon campaign, Goblin Core Shadows of Bastion, where our players take on the role of outcast fantasy monsters fighting to survive the post-apocalyptic prison planet known as Bastion. I'm Mike, your Game Master, and you're also listening to... Hi, I'm Josh, and I will be playing Okaba. This is Ben, and I'm going to be playing Raka. And this is Chris, playing Glax. We open with the vast impression of deep and brilliant red. We see wetlands, a swamp spreading out before us. But this swamp is twisted and decay, filled with rusty blood reds. The trees are twisted and rotten, leaned far over, their leaves dipping deep into the water, and the water itself is a shimmering, translucent red. A single ship, a barge, hovers a few inches above the water. We can see that it itself is ramshackle, covered in rusted panels all over, as it's propelled by unseen forces above and off the water. It's long, several hundred feet long, in fact. And as it floats along, we can see figures milling about on deck. You are aboard the Stinky Barge. You can see that there's about two dozen other passengers aboard. Many of them are fantasy monstrous races, much like yourselves. We can see collections of goblins, gnolls, orcs. And we can see that many of them are wearing armor, carrying weapons, cloaked and hooded. And there's, of course, a few crew members running about, keeping the ship operating. What are each of your characters doing? Glax is standing at the front of the ship, almost Titanic style. Uh, <laughs> and just looking out over the swampland, looking for threats. Yeah, so what does Glax look like? Glax is a goblin. Most goblins are green-skinned. He's kind of a bluish green, um, more on the blue side. He's got a, a sharp pointy nose and sharp pointy ears carrying a, a short spear and a shield and wearing some plate armor, if you will, uh, that's made of cobbled together scrap metal um, with a, a chest plate that basically is a hubcap. So we know that Glax is at the front of the ship wearing cobbled together ramshackle armor. What's Rakar doing? Oh, Rakav. Rakav. That's a V, not an R. Yeah. Running back, Lord. What's Rakav doing? <laughs> Rakar Noir. <laughs> All I can think of <laughs> My goblin investigator. He wears a brown trench coat and investigates murders. <laughs> or he's a cologne. Damn. That's what yeah, I thought. He smells strongly of French cologne. That's I, how he cracks mysteries. God, I, God, I wish I'd thought of that. That's Through great. the power of intuition. Actually, I'm playing great. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, changing now. Rakov is sitting in the middle of the deck doing what he always does, tinkering with some random junk that he put together and trying to figure out how to make it work. He's also a goblin. But he's very tiny, especially even for a goblin. Most people, you'd think that goblins kind of come up to the hip range on a normal human. He's just above the knee. Very tiny. Uh, it's hard to tell that he's bright, brilliant green because he's got all these soot stains and brown stains and stuff all over him. He only wears about as much rags as he needs to in public in order to be decent because he doesn't care. The main thing that's interesting about him is he has this weird contraption on his back that he's cobbled together from various different pieces and everything like that. Where's Okaba? Okaba is coiled up at the end of the bar on the flat boat. He is sitting all the way at the end, coiled all 30 feet of his lightly colored silken body are coiled up and sitting next to all the rags that they use to clean the bar with and his head is just peeking out like the snake popping out of a tightly coiled body and you can just see like the frink the frinkles and wrinkles of his eyes and just the frown of a mouth shape at the very top of the fabric the bartender doesn't even give a second look at okaba he just i've seen weirder than you over here what are you drinking I do not need to drink. Well, if you need anything, I've got some bleach right here. Take those stains right out of you. That could be useful. You know, a bit, and I got it for you. One bit. One bit? That is quite a deal. Huh. 
Maybe. Maybe if I get some blood splatters. We'll see. Well, keep me in mind. Are you, uh, you seen any of them knife ears on this boat? Knife ears? Yeah. Well, Bob might make me remember that. Uh, who is Bob? <laughs> you know, for a sentient cloth, I thought you knew a little more than this. My name is, my name is Okaba. I am not this Bob that you speak of, but, uh, if you could just see a knife ear or an elf, just let me know. My name's Pommel. You just let me know if you want that bleach. I'll keep an eye out for any knife ears. I don't think they'd make it this far. They're pretty uppity. I don't think you're going to find them on a barge like this. What brings you even looking for them? Are, are you sure? Are you sure about that? Yeah, I, I think I'd know. I and Papa just goes and takes a running dive off the ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, bye! <laughs> New character. <laughs> I have a storied past and some of them like this type of thing. Yeah, if you say so. I think you're just, you know what, you're not even the, you're not even the weirdest or dumbest cloth I've ever talked to. You know, sometimes these bar towels, they talk to me. You should get some fresh air. Have you thought about that? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to coil myself and then just slink off the end of the bar and go just weaving and winding through the floor up onto some tables and just try to like look around at the other patrons that are in here. So to fill our listeners in, we are playing Tiny Dungeon. Tiny Dungeon is a minimalistic RPG where the basic role is that if you roll a five or a six on 2d6, you win, you succeed. Off to a hot start. I am unsuccessful. (laughs) Okaba slinks around, weaving through the rusted scrap metal that's used to build furniture on this deck. You can see they get shuffled around all the time. Every time the barge kind of shakes and shifts and turns a little bit, all of these scrap metal crates just kind of shift around a bit. And Okaba actually finds that one of them grabs a seam on his edge and starts to pull a thread out of him. So he stops and he's very distracted and he is not successful at finding anyone. Shoot. One of these days, I'm going to find that guy. As Glax is standing at the front, Titanic style, Hanging off the edge, looking out, he hears a voice behind him. You're pretty brave standing over the gore swamp like that, in that armor. You know what's going to happen if you fall? No. Yeah, I thought not. You may want to come back in here. You see a powerfully built, gray-skinned orc. He's got tusks sticking out from the bottom of his mouth, completely shaved, bald head, a braided beard, powerfully built, muscular, no shirt. You know that you know that swamp, it's it's corrosive, it's acid. I really wish somebody would have told me that. You know, you can't always... Kostinki is not the most trustworthy guy. I don't believe we met, by the way. I'm Thud Younger. You're what now? Thud Younger. Well, it's a pleasure, Thud. I'm Glax. Thud Younger, I need you to... <laughs> it's a pleasure, Thud Younger. Thud Flunger. My dad is Thud Older, and my brother is... <laughs> <laughs> thud middle thud youngest <laughs> yeah so uh i'm actually i'm actually here on account of uh captain Kostinki. he he said he wanted you to go and ask a couple of questions around we think we may have a stowaway on board what does that have to do with me well we Kostinki said he hired you he said you were working for him yeah to protect the boat not to find stowaways a, a stowaway violates the contract language we hold most sacred. I didn't sign any contract. I, I'm pretty sure you did, man. Look, this is super uncool of you. I think you were hired to do this job. Like, what if the stowaway is like breaking our engines or something? When you put it that way. All right. I just gave you real good information about the gore swamp and how you would die. And I told you my deep secret. <laughs> <laughs> my family's changing name, surname. All right, all right. I'll I'll take a look around. Any idea who it might be or what what it might be? Yeah. So there's this weird. I didn't believe Kostinki when he talked about it, and uh, he, I thought Pommel had been drinking himself blind again because he does that. There's this cloth that's talking to people. <laughs> this what now? Yeah, this cloth is talking to people. It's like slithering around and talking and stuff. And, you know, we get some weird types here uh, in 
into Swamplands. We get some weird stuff, but it was asking a lot of questions and said something about a knife ears, and that's just really put Kostinki on edge. My ears are kind of knifey. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I guess. Well, I guess I'll take a look around. Yeah, and if you see any any knife ears or anything like that, you'll you'll let us know. Sure. Am I supposed to be looking out for those? If someone's bringing them up, they're real magical. They're real. They're good at concealment. You know, I'm not a knife ears, but I could be right now. And uh, Thud Young gestures to himself. He says, "I'm not a knife ears, and I can prove it." But you know, they're one could look just like me. A you could even be. Chest. Yeah, yeah. And he reaches down and he pokes you. That yeah, feels real. Yeah, I'm, this is all Thud Younger. <laughs> 100% thud. <laughs> the thud life. Thud life. <laughs> you know, I I thought about calling myself young thud. But I just... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there, but just know knife ears are sneaky and they could be anywhere. Watch your back. That's good to know. I'll keep a lookout, I guess. Goes back to standing. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to give a hearty clap on the very lower back because I'm about hip height. <laughs> what parts of the ship do I have access to from the deck where I'm at right now? Right now, since you're at the very front, you're really, um, you're on the first deck. And so, you know, there's one main deck that stretches the entire length of the ship. You know, there's one beneath it that's where all like the technology and magic and engineering happens. And then there's a deck one above the one you're on now that kind of covers everything and that's where there's like a bar and that's where the bridge is and it's open to the sky okay what's on this main deck that i'm on glax takes a look around and what he can see is a lot of people sitting on benches in rows he can also see that behind the people in benches so they're sitting there obviously passengers who paid for transport and he can see some crates and boxes and barrels with them often made from corrugated aluminum and rusted metal that they're pulling along with them or different wagons. And he can see that even behind that, though, there's these large animal pens, huge and tall and towering. And he can see they're shaking occasionally. Hmm. I want to go and kind of stroll through the crowd that's sitting in all the seats I'm looking for a rag. <laughs> A towel? I, I don't know. Um, seeing if there's one draped across a chair. Go ahead and give me a perception test. Double fives. Double fives. God, Glax is so fucking good at finding cloths and towels. <laughs> there's a lot of them. Uh, that's my shawl. Why are you taking that? Pick it up and I just toss it in the air. Hey! And the cloth flutters off in the air. It's about that point that Glax realizes this barge really doesn't move very fast. It's like walking pace. So it basically just floats down <laughs> like a piece of paper <laughs> right back down to his hands. I'll take that, thank you. Yeah, okay, sorry. Ah, young goblins have no sense of propriety. What's propriety? Exactly. So I'm in my way through the crowd, testing every rag and towel that I see and, and doing the same test, tossing it up in the air and... Seeing what happens. There's a lot of towels to test here. <laughs> he makes a lot of people mad. Yeah, worried about that. None of these rags look like elves or talk to him. Bummer. I'm going to make my way to the animal pens. Um, is there like windows into these things or? Yeah, Glax looks and he can see that there's a barred window that's been pulled shut, but there's a little latch on it that you could use to pull it open. I'm going to open it. He pulls it open and he sees inside massive long pink blobs they have pink and black mottled skin and an incredible close it real fast <laughs> he can't close it in time for the smell to go away oh gosh he gets a big whiff of stoink 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 they look like pigs that have a million legs stretched out incredibly long long pork long pork yeah i'm gonna close that real fast um, okay, then I'll make my way up to the top deck. As Glax makes his way up the rusted and corroded stairs that lead to the upper deck, Rakov 
What are you doing? Don't say it I said Rakov. He said Rakov. Rakov. Rakov, what are you doing? Man, this is elf behavior. What are you it's doing? <laughs> Sus. Sorry. He's the elf. <laughs> Kill him. Yeah, I was the whole time. So I think Nofens is trying to lean down and lecture him about something. Pacing the deck in front of Rakov is a cloaked and hooded figure. We can see flashes of deep bronze skin poking out from underneath of it. We can see a distinguished elderly, well-groomed beard drooping down his chin. This is Nofins, the Hobgoblin Scholar, who asked Rakov to accompany him. Rakov just looks up really quick and says, I told you not to bother me while I'm working. This is very important. You know, we really should be on our very best behavior and our most attentive. The gore swamps are very dangerous, and I've heard the political environment here is quite, quite intense and excruciating. I've been paying attention the whole time. What do you think? I mean, I've I've heard five different conversations. You're the one not paying attention. I am. Young man, I did not bring you here to speak to me this way. I'll speak to you however I want. I'm busy. Young people, they have no sense of propriety. What's propriety? Yes, what is it? In just a moment, the barge that has been moving very slowly, all of a sudden it stops and you feel it sink. It's been floating this entire time, this leather barge has been floating and hovering along a few inches above the gore swamp. And all of a sudden, it stops, and it settles down into the water, and you see off the sides, steam starts to twist from the sides of the barge as the acidic gore swamp starts to chew away at it. Rakov looks around very carefully, doing his usual fidget, and... He pats the area of his cloth where he's hiding the engine parts he stole the other day. <laughs> <laughs> An alarm begins to sound. We hear a really awful ringing, totally atonal discordant, and people start to panic and run all around. What are you doing? All right, let me roll to see what I can figure out about what's going on, because I am perceptive, which gives me advantage anytime I do this. All right, let's do it. While he does that, I want to... Do I see him when I come up to the top deck? We'll get there. You probably do. Okay. Six. Six. As Rakov thinks about how this works, you know, these ships, these leather barges, they're cobbled together with technology that almost no one understands. Nobody understands it like Rakov does. Rakov is... He's the best. He knows this shit. They probably would need his help to repair it. He's a lot smarter than anybody else on this godforsaken prison planet of the Bastion. All right. Everyone can calm down. Rockhoff can handle this. And I start, and I just gather up everything I was working on. It's in a little bit of a cloth, and I wrap it back up. I stick it inside my rags, and then I just start gradually sl- strutting towards the entrance room. The, strutting toward the engine room. Now, the parts I took shouldn't be doing this. I can promise you that. You keep that between me and you, no offense, okay? Yes, of course. I'm I'm very sure that you did nothing with that, but thank you for fixing it. I could do it myself, but I have better things to do, you That's see. That's right. Stand back and watch a pro at work. As Rakov gathers up his tools and his parts into a cloth, he sees all of a sudden a sentient cloth, a moving cloth, a serpentile cloth sticks its head out from behind a set of crates. What is that? You saw nothing. And then I'm going to jump (laughs) and leap and just attach to your clothing. Okay, fine. Useful. Come with me. You are headed to the engine room. That is what you said? Uh, Did I stutter? Perfect. Act like I'm not here. You saw nothing. Fine, fine. You just might want to dirty yourself up a little bit. You look a little pristine. I would never. Do I see them as I come up? Glax sees this... (laughs) ridiculous scrap dressed this junk rat tm 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 with cloth (laughs) all of a sudden wrapped (laughs) around him covering his disgusting clothing talking over his shoulder at it yeah it's like the end of the cloth is just like barely sticking up over his shoulder looking at him and you said you wear rags yeah rags exactly it sticks out like a sore thumb very obvious so well i'd like to go up and grab the rags that you wear and toss those in the air Hey, hey! <laughs> I tighten myself around Rakov's body so he's not naked. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I will protect your modesty. So at that point, I I grab Okaba 
uh, another rag that's on this man's body and toss it in the air. I would like to request that Gla- that Glax has to roll to evade because there's engine parts in my rags and they're going to come down real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. And Okaba, are, you're not letting this happen. You said you tightened down, so it couldn't happen. Yeah, I think. Well, so I, I think need while both re- Glax yeah. and Okaba to give me a test on this. Okay. Um, this isn't strictly how Tiny Dungeon works, but I'm just going to go with whoever gets the higher result. The higher total or the higher... Let's see who has more fives and sixes. Yeah, four. Successes? No, I got a four. Oh, no, I got... Yeah, I got zero. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what did you roll? A four and a three. And I got two fours. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's really kind of sad to watch. <laughs> Glax, <laughs> like, grabs Okaba... Okaba gets pulled like part of the way off. He's kind of like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that... while and while he's doing it, the rags full of engine parts come right down on his head. <laughs> well, well, I imagine, I imagine that. I mean, Glax is a pretty burly goblin, and your knee height. That's right. So if, I feel like if I'm trying to pick up this rag off you, I probably pick you up <laughs> if he's sticking <laughs> to you. Hey, hey! And I me... toss you. In the... No, I'm just kidding. What is, what is this? Hello. What, what is who what, what is this? And at this part, the engine at this point, the <laughs> engine parts hit you. Bam! Ah, oh, that's right. Put me down. Don't take my stuff. First of all, I am not stuff. Second of all, consent is required if you would like to touch this fabric. Consent is required for all fabric, including mine. As Rakov wraps his yeah, rag back stuff. around himself. <laughs> I, put, I, put my, I put my rags back together where I like them. I'll take the very end of the fabric, the tail, and I'll extend it towards you in like a you can kiss the ring bitch gesture and I'll say I am Okaba. Now you may touch. I reach out my finger and I just caress the tip a little bit. You're slowing me down. I need to get to the engine room. We're going to sink. Yeah, I guess you all are going to die if he does not get there. Are we done? Ah, uh, I feel like I'm supposed to do something with you, but I feel like this is more important. Do it later. Move. Okay. With me? Yeah. We can figure this out later. Come on. I'll look you right in the eyes with just like the shape crinkling in the fabric. And I say, you saw nothing. Talk and walk. Talk and walk. Move, tiny one. Okay. As you make your way through the crowd that is panicking and rushing around, there's no goddamn lifeboats on this kind of thing, and also they would get dissolved in the acid too. The ship is starting to shudder more, and it's getting more and more unstable and shaking more. You go down the stairs towards where you know the engine room to be, and you see a riveted and welded door covered in rust... And while you're still far away, where you're still 100 feet away and the whole press of the crowd is between you, you see a figure in a maroon red cloak hold a hand up against the door. There's a flash of light and the figure is gone. How tall was this figure? A little taller than you. Can I roll to see if I got any more details about him? You may. Agreed. Yeah, so if you were doing this as a group test, I think that... I got a success, no need. Rakov can see this person, they're dressed a lot better than the rest of the crowd on this ship. He doesn't have any reason to suspect sabotage, but what were they doing here? They dressed almost as well as Nofin's. What was that? Nofin's brother? Never seen anyone dressed that well before. You said dressed magnificently. That's what it looked like to me. Did it look like elven fabrics? Did it? Did you see leaf flourishings? Did you see gold trim? It was that. I wasn't. I just came around the corner. It flashed and it went away. Did you see lots of embroidery? Try looking yourself next time. You're so curious. I need Ro- to fix the royal, engine. royal bleating. You can keep talking. I'm going. So I walk up to the door. Fancy cap. A tap on it a little brocade. bit. <laughs> and I go, oh, crap. They patched the hole I got through last time. <laughs> Would you like me to slide under that door? Is there a hole for that? I mean, if you can do it, sure. Is there a hole for that? <laughs> Go ahead and make a test for this. We're going to take this a slinking test. So you're standing, you arrive at the door and you see that someone has flash welded it shut. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do have advantage on sneakies. 
Okay. We're going to see if you can figure this out, if Okaba can do this. Okay. Uh, I guess wherever there's a... The door is welded, but maybe there's some type of locking mechanism that I'm just going to try to roll myself and squeeze into. Yeah. So... That door could present a problem. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, I'll roll over a four. Can we start marking XP? <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> so... Okaba curls himself, well, flattens himself out into a thin sheet, presses his head into the deck. And I just snail crawl at the bottom of the door and just like headbutt it real hard. I guess that doesn't work. Creature, there's no way through. We are blocked. All right, Muscles, you got any ideas? Big one. Not that big. How big is this door? Bigger than me. Door sized. Regular door sized. Regular door sized. It's massive. (laughs) It's like double my height. Um, uh, I'm going to try running into it. Okay. Let's make a test. <laughs> I'm going to back up and coil back around Rakov. It's a six. Six. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Glax takes like 40 steps back. Yeah, you said we were like 100 feet away. So. Yeah. <laughs> running <laughs> start, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Screaming the whole time. <laughs> Does it like the bull scrape with both feet? <laughs> Puts a shoulder down, shifts his hubcap to that shoulder. That's right. Dashes across, launches himself at the very end, jumping sideways, Mario side B attack style, (laughs) and slams his shoulder into the metal door frame and slides to the ground. A few seconds pass, and a crack appears in the weld, and the door swings open. Perfect! You got the same crack as before. So then, Rakov shifts the little junk object off of his back. So this, for the listeners, is what I've described as the junk cannon. Oh. But there's one other special thing on this. It's got a switch. The switches have two sides. Both are marked S. Because <laughs> only Rakov knows what both of them do. <laughs> so he flicks it backwards, and he puts that to the suck setting. And he's going to try to pull the door off with the suction on his junk cannon. So the door is cracked open, but Rakov is going to just suck the whole door off anyway. Okay, all I got to do is peel a piece back, and then we've got a way through. I got Mario and Luigi in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so give me a test for that. As Rakov is drawing his junk cannon, all of you hear a horrible scream from Glax. From across the My deck, <laughs> the scream radiates out. You hear at first one person screaming in pain and the people around them shouting in terror and shock. Mm, a cacophony of wailing. It's been decades. I love it. <laughs> All right. That's a six. That's a, so you hear. <laughs> as this thing slowly starts cranking up. And then Rockoff starts banging on it to make it go faster. And then finally you hear a click and it just... And then you hear... As part of the iron door peels back. And finally, after about... Yeah. (laughs) Pop. (laughs) Finally, it bends back far enough that there's enough of an opening that Okaba could get through. There you go, Sheet. Go on through. I will go through of my own volition, not because you told me to. And then you start scrambling forward, and just for a second, you get pulled back by the suction as well, because I'm having trouble <laughs> t- turning this thing off. That, hold on, hold on, I can get it, I can get it. And then I just smack it down on the deck and it stops. <laughs> as that he is smacks my, it my down, toes. it faces in like random directions, and we see like people's glasses and random belongings start to fly towards him. Oh, perfect, more stuff! Oh, um, I will sneak into there and see what I see with my fabric-y eyes. <laughs> While he's going in, can I take a look over the crowd behind us and see if I can figure out where that scream came from? You may. Perfectly <laughs> normal wailing. <laughs> <laughs> I need each of you to give me a decent, a, you're both making percent, well, you're making a sneaky test. So I need you to give me a sneaky test. I need you to give me a CE test. I'm not, I'm not bothering with this because I'm focused on getting in the door and fixing the engine. <laughs> hey, we finally did it. 
I got one. Hey. Luck success. <laughs> Me too. Luck's turning around, boys. Okava wiggles his way in, and now he's in his environment. There's many thin, flat surfaces that he can press himself against and wiggle through. There's like little air ducts and pipes that he's just the perfect, he's the sheet for the job. <laughs> I'm just sneaking and coiling and like, it's almost like in a cartoon when you see a, a snail like scrunching its body up and like worming along the ground. It's like that. It's awful and horrible to look at, but it works. Yes, but it is so effective. Akaba gets a look now. He's on like a pipe above everything, hidden away. And so when he looks down, he sees a lot of mechanisms and nothing in Okaba's background prepares him for all of the machinery he sees. He sees giant pistons swinging up and down. He can see huge levers flipping back and forth. But what's terrifying is he can see that swamp water, the red gore swamp water, has started to eat through the hull and it's springing in and spraying streams of acid through and into the air and damaging all of the machinery as it does. There's sparks flying. There's random bursts of magical energy powering off. We can see bright green lights flicker on and then disappear immediately as gemstones burst. It looks pretty bad in there. And then it gets worse. He notices some of these holes. They're too big to have been melted in. He sees, was that one bitten away? Did that get eaten? And then he sees a bright red, partially decayed fin circling through water that has begun to collect along the bottom. Hey, she, open the door. Open the door. Let me in. Good news. I found the problem. Bad news. We are sinking. Oh, really? I had no idea. Massive hole. And there's a fish. A fish? I am not equipped to handle this battle, and I do not believe that it would be wise to engage. As Glax looks out over the screaming crowd in terror, there's blood spurting from a horrible arterial wound, like oh. showering people in blood. And he can see that something has pulled itself onto deck and ripped a person's entire arm off. It looks, he sees a giant fin on its back. He sees mottled and carved away skin that started to decay off of it. He can see musculature underneath of it. But what sticks with him is he can see eyes. He can see eyes that are filled with rage and intelligent as this hulking gore shark drags itself across the deck looking for people and snapping at anyone who comes close enough. I, <clears throat> I tap on Rukhov's shoulder and point over and say, we probably ought to deal with that. Probably have to deal with the engine, otherwise we sink. You go you go deal with that. I'll deal with this. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I charge. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, the idea. Yes. So, Glax... You are rushing in, man. There's a crowd of people running away from you. They're not prepared for this. They don't have the kind of weapons and arms and armor that Glax does. So I'm going hubcap still on my shoulder, and I'm going to do the same thing at the door. I'm just going to shoulder bash him, try to knock him over the side. Hell yeah. Glax rushes in. You make that test for me, man. Roll 2d6. Unless, have you mastered your hubcap? No. Okay, I'm sorry. It's 2d6 on this. Uh, it's a six and a five. Almost a crit. Almost a crit. Glax runs in. The car, the crowd streaming and parting around him. He leaps into the air. Again, Mario side B style. Jumps over someone's head as he does this. He comes down and he shoulder clocks this hulking, standing, walking gore shark. It's trailing bits of corrosion and decay behind it. It snaps in the air and catches someone's arm right next to him. And then just in time, Glax lands with his shoulder straight into the shark's face. It knocks it backward. We see a flailing of limbs and fins as it reaches the railing and falls back over. We hear a splash as it lands. Glax gets a look. There's a dozen other fins circling around down there and more of them 
are sort of the jump higher and higher. He can see the same body, this same twisted human shark crossing over. They're coming closer, and as the ship sinks deeper and deeper, more of them are going to make it on board. All right, whatever your name was, you need to do your stuff. I hate to be that guy. Actually, I hate to be that guy, but it's not Mario's side B. It's definitely Luigi's side B. Mario's side B is a cape. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> Our entire podcast is a lie. <laughs> Mario's side B was over B, here, B, like, whipping Okaba around. You're right. Yeah, you're I was right. like, his side B is a cape it that is. reflects projectiles. And it I, is. I Luigi's thought of it, but I wasn't going to say is it. when he like squats and then he does like a ah! to the side. <laughs> Dear podcast listeners, I am a filthy person who only plays sorties. He's a fake yeah. gamer. Call him out. <laughs> All right. Getting back into it. In other news, I guess we were fighting a shark thing. <laughs> many, many shark things. Rakav Okaba, you hear Glax is shouted warning after he just side rushed this shark back into the water. You're looking around, you see. At least one has made it into the engine room. Swimming around, there's not a lot of water. The water is only for for a human, the water would be about hip height at this point. But for you, Rocco, it's pretty high. That's a problem. I'll go first. All right. Uh, I will coil and snake my way down to the door and open it as much as I can for my friend to come inside. You have no trouble at this point pulling the door open. It's been battered and bruised. It swings open. This rusted junk heap of a door swings open. Perfect. Be, be careful. I saw a fin in the water. Ah, don't worry. You mentioned it. I, I will. Perfect idea for this. Not be getting in that water. It is my one true nemesis. <laughs> I think it's all of our nemesis. And with that, Rakov pulls out one of the parts he removed from the engine room yesterday, which is the part to the water pump <laughs> loads it into the junk cannon and he's going to try to shoot the part right back into place. Holy shit. I feel like I should be able to set higher difficulty for this test because that's a lot, but okay. All right. You are going to make a technology test. This is a techno babble test. All right. So techno babble allows me to be able to make stuff work through sheer force of will. So I think I can at least say I get 3d6 on this. But it's your call. All right, you get 3d6 on it. All right. I finally failed. <laughs> oh, great. Rakov pulls a random metal cylinder. They all look the same. They all look like random metal cylinders that are kind of grimy and corroded and oily, but he knows the right one immediately. He grabs it, shoves it into his junk launcher, and without a care in the world, raises it, fires it into the air, and as it's traveling through, the fin, the gore shark with the fin, jumps into the air and just fucking denies it. Just launches up, swings a hand, and smacks it back into the water. Hey, you cheated! There's a splash, and he watches as the component to fix the water pump starts to smoke. Mm. Try to get that back. Alright, let's see what else I got here. He starts rummaging through his cloth to see what he can come up with next. I'm giving somebody else a chance to act. Go for it. In this game, do the players act or the monsters get to go too? I mean, I feel like I've accomplished plenty with my monsters. I'm sinking a barge, so I'm <laughs> okay. satisfied. Uh, and we also haven't really entered a combat where I feel an initiative role is necessary. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, how far away is this creature? In the water? Yeah. I'd say you're 25-ish feet away from it. Not too far. <laughs> can I wait until it gets closer and then attack it you certainly how yes absolutely okay because my my friend is next to me so i'm just going to like curl from the door and coil up him and like sort of like position myself near the top of his head so that if he starts to sink i'm running away <laughs> um and Fair enough from the sides of my fabric i'm going to pop out two tiny three fingered claw like hands and they're going to like splay out these little tiny knife blades okay and just prepare so okaba climbs up onto rock of shoulders pulls out his silken claws and he is ready for this shit mm -hmm. glax what are we doing um 
I'm gonna yell out. Uh, do I? Well, do I know what these things are called? What they are? Yeah, yeah, you do. You've heard the stories. You've heard the rumors of them. They're gore sharks. They're they're humanoid shark hybrid. At some point in the past history, as Bastion was decaying and devolving into just utter genetic insanity as every creature was selected against and developed intense and horrible cancers, awful hybrids started to appear. One of those was the gore shark. Sharks are perfect predators. They've existed in such long times, and that was enough for them to continue surviving. They have a thick, thick layer of skin that's like razors that's difficult to pierce with normal weapons. And they have hands at the ends of their fins and they can walk on land slowly. They can drag themselves along. And of course, they are gifted with a mouth of beautiful teeth. Very expensive dental work. And they love poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yell out, We got gore sharks! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, anybody want to do something about that? <laughs> See if anybody has weapons or... I thought that was your job. There's like 20 yeah. of them. You hear a clanging across the deck next to you. And yeah, you know, I might be able to help with that. Uh, listen, I got to handle these guys over on the other side of the ship. But why don't you take care of those? And you see Thad Young throw something through the air towards you. You see a long black piece of metal flying through the air. Glax snatches it out of the air. It's a harpoon. Yeah, that should be enough for you to take care of that big guy. Ah, thanks. I think. It's got a coil of rope dangling from one end of it. You can see that it's meant to be tied around your waist and used to like grab something and pull it to you. I don't want it pull it to me. <laughs> you got so many options uh, here. And I, I think this I is a good time. To ask. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and roll initiative. Words I've never said on this podcast before. I need everybody to roll 2d6 and tell me the result. One success. Well, no, I need the actual sum. Oh, seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Four. Four. Someone roll 2d6 for me. It's for my shark. Got it. Yeah, you gotcha. Five. Five. All right. So top of the order is Rakov with an eight. Rakov. Rakov. I've, I've stopped. It's fine. We all know who he's talking Rock about. Rockov. Whatever. Rock. I will say it correctly at some point. <laughs> Rockov. Last name Gibraltar. <laughs> I not said what his last name is yet. Okay. And then the seven was Okaba? No. The seven was Rakov. The eight was me. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Correct me. You can tell I am unfit to be a DM for a system like this. No, don't. That doesn't help me, guys. Holding it. Okay, thanks. That, then I have to look at your fingers and then your name. I'm sorry. So much work. I was mainly just. This doing is it so much people. harder than just setting like five is me, seven is. Isn't it nice off. when like you could go like anybody get like a twenty and up, and then but like with this, there's just not enough numbers. There's not enough numbers. So. You're right. I wish there were more numbers. <laughs> I know. I just need right. bigger dice. Maybe someday. Almost like a 20-sided one. Yeah. Maybe, need... maybe someday the initiative tracker will come back. Maybe. <laughs> Glax, you are first. You see that you have a scene of sparks and explosions and chaos. As water streaks into the engine hole, you can hear people screaming on deck, and you're starting to hear the thuds of different feet as more gore sharks launch their way onto deck. You can hear the sound of Thud Young dealing with them on his own. Hey, get back off of there. That's not very nice of you. <laughs> uh, so have any climbed up on my side? Not on your yeah. side right okay. now. You just got the one in the engine bay to deal with okay. in front of you. Then I'm going to run as far as I can towards the engine bay. Um, and can I get in range of throwing this harpoon at that one? You can get into far range. Okay. The way that Tiny Dungeon works is there are three ranges. There is close. There's two close, close, and far. Correct? Am I saying that correctly? Don't know. That but feels correct. That feels correct. Yes. Close enough. And you can use ranged weapons. There's close, near, and far. 
and you can use a ranged weapon from far. Okay. I would so, like yeah, to do that. You may certainly do that. What is your goal here? To impale this mother trucker. All right. Make that test. 2d6. 2d6. It's a six. All right. Glax, he's got to rearrange his hubcap shoulder plate to do this because it really yeah. It, yeah, makes it difficult to move the throwing arm. Draws back his harpoon, launches it through the air, and he catches this gore shark straight through the fin. Pretty solid hold. He's got something to do to this now. He sees the shark buck and bounce up and down as it takes this. It starts to pull and water splashes everywhere as its tail thrashes the water. Oh, I was supposed to tie that to something, wasn't I? <laughs> Tied to you. Uh, okay, I mean, can I do anything else? Or I think that is a turn. Yep, I agree. All right, so since he's gotten the shark impaled, Rockov's been digging in his cloth this whole time. He hasn't found anything. He's been brushing against a lot of smooth, not jagged things. Then he gets poked by something, and he remembers. Oh, yeah. All those knives I stole from the galley three days ago. So he pulls out this handful of basically butter knife looking things, loads them into the, into the junk launcher, takes aim, and he's basically going to shotgun blast this shark with a whole bunch of butter knives. All right. You make that. You make your ranged combat test, sir. All right. Okay. That's a miss. But since I'm working with improvised weapons, I get an extra action thanks to my bar fighter. So I'm going to shoot one more time. One more handful of knives, and then I'm out. Okay. Missed again. <laughs> Neither of those were critical misses, right? <laughs> no. As the water is getting churned up by the thrashing gore shark, we see two more splashes get added to it as Rockov's rounds just go, as his shotgun blasts of cutlery go wide, fall into the water and start to steam. We see more sparks cascading down from the air. I mean, easy enough. They probably disintegrate like that. Ah! Should have gotten something thicker. Do not touch that. The gore shark. I think you're saying that wrong. Oh? It's vor shark. Vor shark. The vor shark yeah. gets a turn now. Read yeah. it. I'm not used to having an initiative <laughs> order for me. The gore shark, it's not dumb. It can feel that it's being held back and constrained by something. It's going to try to pull Glax into the water with it. I need someone to roll 2d6 for me. Not it. I gotcha. That's a5. A5. Glax hangs on to the rope a little bit too long. His toe crosses into the acidic water and he takes one point of damage. <gasps> as he watches as his boot... His metal boot that's probably made from like a shoe sizing tool starts to corrode and hiss away and he feels some of it touch his skin. One of your seven toes. Oh no. Ha! That smarts. Okaba. Uh, where is this shark in relation to us? It is in the water roughly, probably at this point, since it pulled the rope tight, probably something like 30 feet away from you again. We're, so the, we're down below deck. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's in the water. And you're fighting the one down below deck as well? Yeah. Yeah, he came down to help yes. us. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, well, that is outside of my range. Good luck, fellow adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll prepare to attack when it gets close. You could find, like, a pipe to scramble along and, like, drop down and go for it from above. I would rather not. Okay. <laughs> so Okaba is good out here. Yes. Back to the top of the initiative order. Glax, it's you again. You've got this shark pulling and straining, trying to get you into the water with it. How far is it from dry deck? I would say it's in near range where you could attack it with that it is like 15 feet away from dry deck. Okay, so with my movement speed, um, yeah, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> with, with my movement, I'd like to drag, basically drag it onto deck out of the water. All right. So this, I am going to treat this as an opposed test. Okay. So you roll 2d6. I need someone to roll 2d6 for me. Got it. Two fives. Got one five and a four. Neither of you make progress. This You're pulling up against each other. You can tell that the gore shark is probably getting tired and it's probably hurting. Pulling on his fin that much is probably hurting. 
At least it's not going to be able to attack you this round, but no dice. Rakov, Rakov, Rakovia. <laughs> Remind me to never make complicated names again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm Jim, the goblin. <laughs> Bob Goblin. So, since Okaba's on his back, he heard him say, no thanks, I'm good. And then he said, mm, actually, I just got an idea. And he's going to grab him no. and stuff him into the junk yes. launcher. <laughs> and he's going to shoot him up toward the ceiling. So hopefully he can then roll down, pick up the part that's still sizzling and still barely there. I want you guys to talk through this in character. I mean, if you want to roll to resist this, I'm cool with it. Well, but so you what wouldn't you just saying? do it. You would talk through yeah. it. You guys would tell each other what's happening. No, I'm, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot him and I'm going to yell because I want him to grab the pipe that's in there. So I, you need to so do that with dialogue. Yeah. yeah. So while I'm, while I'm grabbing you and stuffing you in, you're going, oh, no. I'm like, grab the pole and then grab the part. Yes. And then you could just stuff it in there. Just like I'm stuffing you in right now. Come yeah. on. Come on. Shoot me to safety up high. That's the plan. Thank you. And what does this part look like? The thing I threw, I shot in there. Metal. It's right there floating. Metal and metal and round like everything else in here. Stop looking in there. That's my stuff. Uh, I'll try my best. All right, here we go. Yep. You know, if this goes badly, Okaba is in a lot of danger. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> <laughs> This girl empty. <laughs> <laughs> the gore shark just opens its mouth. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. Cr I didn't crit miss. Okay, no, I just didn't. missed. <laughs> so if I crit miss, I would have shot you at it. You were trying to launch Okaba onto something that he could reach the fitting from. Yeah, I wanted to keep him as high as possible. So since I only just missed. I think maybe I end up shooting him into the back of the room instead. I think that what happens is you miss and he arcs across, ballistic trajectory across, and Okaba is so lucky. He lands on a platform that's just barely out of the water. It's been splashed on a little bit as the ship rocks, and he does take one point of damage as the acid corrodes some of the very nice corners of his fabric but he finds himself now less than five feet away from the shark as it's trying to pull Glax into the water with it. Hmm. Well, it burns. It kind of burns good, though. Let's see how it feels on you. It is your turn. Perfect. I will take my two razor claws and I will rake them across this creature's hide. All right. Give me that attack test. I have mastery with these claws. Oh, shit. That's two successes. Damn right you do. Do I see two sixes over there? No. no. Six oh, and a five. Damn, I thought it was two sixes. Do Okaba, you, have, do you can choose to make them sixes. <laughs> yeah, everything's the GM's discretion, right? Good luck point. <laughs> <laughs> Flicks out his claws, sizzling cloth underneath of him, stretches out and very carefully avoids the acid that the shark is in as it's thrashing about, as a little bit of its torso comes out of the water slashes through it and he cuts deep furrows in and as he does he sees some of the acid makes its way in once that hide is torn the shark isn't protected anymore it screams and it begins to bounce and it begins to thrash even harder than it did before glax is nearly pulled into the water it gets so aggressive we are back to the top of the round i have Rules another there. action Oh, shit. <laughs> no, we are not at the top of the round. Uh, with my other action, I am going to take the evade action. So it has disadvantage. It wants to attack me. Okay, <laughs> smart. Because fuck that. Um, I would like... Still 15 feet away, presumably. Um, I would like to move next to Rakov. Rakov, whatever. Um, and... Try to pull the Vor Shark in again. All right. The shark is going to make this test at a disadvantage because it's been injured and it has acid streaming into its body right now. So I need someone to roll one dice for me and I need Glax to roll 2d6. Got a six and a three. Three. This time, Glax can see the shark 
its muscles are starting to deaden as the gore swamp seeps in and starts to destroy muscle tissue. Galax gets his arm tight around the rope and cranks it in. He gets another hand in front of it and he begins to reel the shark towards him and he's rewarded as it's pulled backward, foot, tail, fin first onto the metal in front of him. It's struggling and snarling and screaming with a weirdly human voice as it gnashes its teeth all around right and left. Rakov, Rakov. Okay, so it's like right in front of us. It's like right in front of you. It's twisting around all over. Glax is having to fight to keep it at arm's length. Well, its usual functions aren't working right. I'm just going to bring the junk cannon down on top of it. Try to kill it. Smack it. Yeah, I'm just smacking it. Make that attack test. Two successes. Two successes. I did not crit. Rakov's, Rakov's junk cannon smashes down through the air. We can see the brain pan of the gore shark deflect a little bit on the top of its head. You can see bits of skull begin to... You can see bits of skull collapse and cave in. You see it's thick sandpaper hide torn away. It's not dead yet, but it doesn't have a whole lot of ability to stop you from killing it. Okay. The gore shark doesn't get a turn. It spent its turn fighting against Glax. Okaba, you are on a platform by yourself. You can tell if you stay here a whole lot longer, you may get a little little more of an acid dip. Acid washed Okaba. Uh, that is not my style. Uh, I would like to climb onto like the pipes or walls that are nearby is that an option that is an option i am going to make you roll for it okay um i don't think there is a creature with a climb speed in this no i th- think it's just a regular test so i think we should make a test for it no <laughs> okaba is made of silk and these walls they're really slick and they're kind of oily right now and so he starts to like snake his way up it he makes it part of the way up and then slides back. And up. then like a gecko trying to climb up the side of its terrarium. Just <laughs> legs and fabric waving. You have another action. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I get two. Can I see that canister? You can. Is it within reach? It is I, within like, reach. Stretch out to grab it? Yeah. Can I do that? You can. Okaba stretches out, snaps the part out of the water. <laughs> disgusting and i'll coil around it and like wrap it up in like my little tummy section (laughs) can hear a little hissing as the water drips off of it and he does take another point of damage from both that and the water lapping at his cloth feet all around him galax it's all you young sirs i am dying (laughs) i do not have much time for this mortal coil I throw the harpoon at Okaba, impale him, and pull him through the water. (laughs) (laughs) I'll save you. Thank you for the sweet release. (laughs) I've always wanted to go to Valhalla. (laughs) Um, I would like to take my short spear and stab this mofo. All right. Uh, I think you already have advantage on this. Do I? Uh, Oh, it is my mastered weapon. yeah, Yeah, so it's your mastered weapon. It's one success. That's enough to do it. Glax has the harpoon in one hand, tucks it like under his foot, and that's enough to hold the gore shark still while he lines up a perfect shot. He can see where Rakov bashed its brain pan in a little bit. He can see where Rakov bashed its brain pan in a little bit and deflected its skull, and he knows it's soft there. He pulls his spear back and he shoves it straight through where the bone has been crumpled in. He's rewarded with the sight of a little bit of blood and brain spurting out along his spear. He rips it out and we see chunks of skull go flying off the harpoon. The gore shark stops thrashing and moving, falls over, not falls over, it's already over. Gore shark stops moving, looks dead. You still have a hold full of acid water to deal with. All right, throw me. I can get in there and get close. Throw me. Come on. Hey, cow, catch me. <laughs> All right. I was already fighting for his life. 
He's got five HP. It's fine. I, oh my god, Josh really is Towley. I, <laughs> I extend. I'm so high, I can't even. I extend. Hey, what do you expect two me arms. to do over here? I don't even know where I am. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll pick up Rukov and throw him. I mean, what do you, what do you want me to do? Throw you into the water? No, above the water, you idiot. Throw him. <laughs> I am a safety rescue. I just interpret that as <laughs> you can you throw him into the me. water so that you then fall in the water. <laughs> Do a belly flop. <laughs> Do a belly roll. Um, I will take Rakov and uh, load him into his own gun. <laughs> <laughs> the gun's coming with me. Actually, I... Have you considered loading yourself into your own gun and then taking your pinky toe and flicking the trigger <laughs> to blast yourself across the room? <laughs> If I made it so I can do that, that's uh. um. So I will chuck him, aim him for the ceiling, the pipes, um, as near to the to Okaba as I can. Okay. All right. This is not a weapon you're familiar with. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I don't think I should put disadvantage on this, but. I am just going to treat it as a regular 2d6 combat test. No mastery applies. Okay. I'll tuck into a ball to make it as easy as possible. Okaba. I'm going to lay flat, extend both of my edges uh, as if I'm opening arms wide and prepare to catch a <laughs> fucking hammock. Like, yes. I like it. <laughs> trapeze safety net. That's a crit fail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe, Kobe. <laughs> How'd you guys die? <laughs> Just threw each other around. <laughs> Glax, <clears throat> Glax takes the junk launcher. Rakov said earlier, it's got two S's marked on it. Yep, and no one knows which one is Except which. Me. Wait, I didn't tell you to do that. Stop. Glax pulls the trigger. And Rakov goes flying completely in the wrong direction. Ow! Bounces off the ceiling and then into the door. He's so small that he ends up sliding down the stairs, cheese gratering his face all along them. And he takes two points of hit point damage. Ooh. Oh, God. I can't evade that, can I? You can try. Okay. I think you can evade yeah. that. Okay, so go I have goblin uh, agility. I will let so. you use your goblin agility to so. evade it. I get to... It's only a 1d6 roll. All right. Yep. No. It's worth a shot. Okay. Rock of slides down the steps the wrong direction, face inches away from the acid that he could have found himself launched into, but at least Glax got it the wrong direction when he totally misaimed it. There's a reason why I only use that. It seemed easy enough. I think it's up to you, Tal. I am a beautiful piece of fabric. I am not a towel. I do not wipe up moisture or liquids. I do have your canister. It is. Uh, it's up to you, fabric. Thank you. It is this, correct? And I'll pop it out of my little tummy. <laughs> yes, yes, that's it, that's it. Just put it in the hole that it looks like. It's right over there. Do I see the hole? Yeah, I think that at this point, Rakov has tried to get to it enough times that you've got an idea of where it goes. Can I reach it? It's going to be hard. Yeah, You're going to have to yeah, can I like, make a test to crawl over there? 30 feet. You may. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. But you are flexible and silken, and you might make it. Come on. <sighs> That's a success. Just one. Okaba carries the cylinder in his little stomach pouch. Yeah, I like wrap around it, and then with the front and the back... I pop out like my little tiny like claw hands and I'm like a, a lizard just like crawling. Scurrying along pipes and equipment hanging along the ceiling. And then he like stretches. I, got, I need that to stop moving. And then he stretches out like his stomach down from the ceiling and like shoves this pump back into place where Rakov, where Rakov never should have taken it from in the first place. You see all of a sudden... The sparks have been going in here. They're still going. They're still showering down. This ship is not out of the woods. But the water pump begins to churn. You can see smoke and steam 
rising out of it because this does not resist acid very well, but the water level in the engine room begins to drop. As it does, you see a glow of soft turquoise light as the engines, as the as the levitation engines that keep this barge floating turn on and you feel a shudder as the barge lifts up into the air. Water streaming out from beneath it, bits of corrugated aluminum falling off the bottom. You see a gigantic hole next to you just pouring water out of it, open to daylight. It's in rough, rough shape. You hear Thad Young along the top say, yeah, you're going to want to fall off down that now. You better jump now or that fall is just going to get worse. I'm going to run, I'm gonna get, get to the doorway and run outside and, and take survey of what's going on on the deck. It looks like Glax rushes onto the deck. His eyes are slightly blinded by the sunlight. He sees the red trees, the gore swamp stretched out. He sees that two gore sharks have made their way onto deck. And as he watches, he sees Thad Young drop down into a crouch, sweep the leg from under it, and then follow it up with a shoulder to the solar plexus and knock it over the railing and it falls off. There's one more gore shark left. I'm going to I'm gonna try to do the same thing I did earlier and the same thing he just did. I'm going to try to shoulder charge it off the side. Give me that combat test. What are Rakov and Okaba doing? I'm just kind of sitting, rummaging through my rags again, not thinking the rags could actually help with my wound and trying to find something else. Okaba? Young master, we had a success. I am the tinkerer now, so thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I will be making my way back onto the deck as well. Yeah, have fun. Glax? Yes, one success. One success. Glax rushes across the deck, has time to pull his hubcap shoulder plate into place, slams into the gore shark and knocks it over the railing and is rewarded with the sight of it flopping over and falling back into the water. Sweet. You all gather back on deck. Success. Do we fix it? Do I? Do I, I, I am your savior. We fixed I the put engine. The canister in. We, we fixed the engine. It was great. Thank you so Where, much. Where, where's no fans? No fans. No fans. Who is that? What does he look like? Yes, 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 young. Rakov, I am sure you are very delighted with yourself and what you've done to bring the ship back into the air. Of course, I was never worried. I knew you could do this the whole time. I certainly had no idea that we were ever in any danger, and I knew we were in your safe hands. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. I hurt my face. Do something about it. Oh, yes, that is quite unfortunate, though. One might say it's an improvement. Uh, <laughs> I suppose I can help a little bit. Uh, someone roll 2d6 for me. I'm going to okay. steal your keys again for that. Yeah. And put them in that silly launcher of yours. Come on, you know that I'd need those. Yeah, 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 we'll get them back this time. It's a one and a four. Ow. <laughs> As Rakov says... You just won't get them back this time. Yes, well, I'm quite sure that means that there's nothing I can do for your face. Ah. Ah. Dad Young walks across the deck and says, So, uh, did you figure out who did it? We did see a red cloaked figure. He was kind of tall and very suspicious. Yeah. He he poofed away in a flash of light. Yes. Also, I think I found the stowaway. He was, I, I whisper very loudly. <laughs> dressed luxuriantly. Yeah, luxuriantly dressed stowaway. That sounds real believable to me. Oh, that's one. Which one? That's one. And I point to Okaba. What, what are you talking about? That's part of my, that's part of my outfit. I'm here. I, I paid my fare to ride this vessel. I find that offensive that you would think that I'm a stowaway. Yeah, you got a problem with fabric, huh? It's not what I was told. Yes, well... Take it up with him. Yeah, uh, I think... I don't remember selling you a fare. I think I'd remember that. I know... L listen to me, tall stuff. He I know was instrumental in making sure all of us didn't die, okay? You leave him alone. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if... I think if you had sold a fare to a, a fabric like me, you'd remember. Yeah, I think I would. Maybe you've got memory problems, huh? You want me to try to fix that too? Yeah, what is your name again? Thad Young. Is it not Thud? <laughs> <laughs> got him. Yeah, maybe I do have memory problems sometimes. <laughs>
Right. To be fair, he he's right. He did save us all. I fixed the ship. We fixed the ship. He uh, just helped. I put it in. Sure you did. Also, you it's should a... talk to Pommel. He's a great, great dude. Yeah, I'm about to. He could, he could, uh, he could, <laughs> he could tell you that I am a legitimate patron of this vessel. <laughs> yeah, Pommel got his arm ripped off. Oh, oh no. Eh, still serve bar with one arm. It's fine. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so uh, listen, I got some I got some work to go do. I don't believe you about this stowaway. Well, uh, well, well, well. I'd have remembered selling someone in a red. Both of you guys, I'd have remembered a cloth and a figure in red. Well, he did disappear and poofed out of nowhere, so maybe he teleported here from somewhere else without going through the ticket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you, and if you got a problem about that, fabric has many uses. Put it to work. Yeah, we could use some help drying the deck. No. You know, you could pay your way. No. Where are the women and children and yellow-bellied folk who chose not to fight these gore sharks? Where are they stationed? Well, a lot of them, they're hiding up top. Perfect. Let's go see them. Yeah. Find somebody to fix my face. I'll handle vacuuming up all the water and sending it back off. Honestly, I, got, I, got, I got tasks for this. I, I got don't, stuff for this. I don't think anything can be done to fix your face. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm talking about the wound on the side. Stop making fun of how I look. The, it's is, rude. It, is it the mole or the, the cut? <laughs> the mole was there before. You saw it. Also, have you seen an elf? Sorcerer Listen. does magic. Seen one of them? Listen, I know you've been pulling my leg a lot. I heard... I haven't seen him doing it. This was, someone spread rumors of a knife ears on board, and if I'd seen one, that, believe me, I'd have had words maybe, with her. Maybe you forgot about or that, him. too. I'd have had words for that. There if you is, see a knife ears, you tell me. You aren't. Are you? They can do a lot of magic. You look kind of elven. And I, I poke Okaba in the chest. What I assume is his chest is below, right below his face. I go, nope, he's pretty real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am a physical being. Thank you for that. No, I am looking for an L, the one of the knife ears that you speak on order of Swamp King Skrilliamson. Wait, Ring a bell. Skrilliamson? I'm supposed to go see him. Uh, yeah, does that seem official to you? Yeah, that does. He'd have given you some kind of what? Everyone who stows away on my ship has something about how they're, oh, I only did it because the elves made me. Hey, no, no offense. No offense. Come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, check this out. Yeah, check yes, out this. Uh, young master. What? What is it now? Hey, hey, yeah, this, uh, that, this, uh, uh Akaba here. And, and, uh, no, Skrilliamson, your king. I'm going to show him the very back of my little tapestry that I have where the king's signature is. And it just says, like, find that elf. With the king's name. Ow, so official. Look at that. <laughs> that is spelled D A T. <laughs> yes, uh, the his trolliness is spelling, yeah. His high trolliness is known for his distinctive penmanship. <laughs> and you see that he's written in like childlike <laughs> scrawl, <laughs> like with a block of granite. And it's so like, nicely done too. Look at that. Yes. Yes, it's very sovereign like. Such resolute calligraphy. Yes, this matches the uh, the signature on my own documents as I am traveling. I will vouch. That you can read. I can, of course. Oh, I kind of just figured you couldn't. So no, I've my way through the that. high scholar, the best in all the land, the only irreplaceable oh, scholar in all of Bastion. If anybody had any questions or needed any information, I am certain to know the answer or where to find it. He doesn't of know course, everything. I charge a price for my services, and I am well paid. Currently, I'm traveling to take a contract for his trolliness. His high king, Skrilliamson, he has a few questions, it would seem, and I am the I am the hobgoblin for the job. It's a difficult life, I assure you, on the road with children like Rockhov over here who create excitement and tension where none is needed. Hey, I just make things, all right? You're the smart one. Yes, you make things worse. <laughs> Noted. Galax, can I speak with you a moment? Sure. 
No offense, you really got to stop telling people about that, like, Sonic stuff, you know? And I'll just, like, coil my yeah. way a few feet away, and then once he joins me, I'll snake up his arm. Okay, that no offense guy, he talks real fancy. Yeah. He sounds just like DJ Linky Lips, who I used to work for. <laughs> That's what his friends call him. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's a real high-ranking elf. <laughs> Minstrel? Ring a bell? Does it ring a bell? I think this is an improv yes and question. I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe you should roll for it to see if it rings a bell. I, I don't know what this is about. Did you, did you say DJ? DJ Linky Lips. Yes. Do you not know? It's His formal name is Dejazim, but he prefers oh. DJ to his friends. He's not a disc jockey. What is a disc jockey? I made one of those lines. Dejazim Link Letter. How do you not know? It's one of the nobles. I mean, I've, I feel like I've heard the name, maybe. I don't know. Honestly, that's besides the point. This no fence guy talks real fancy. Is he not one of the elves? Could be that guy. I mean, anybody. I mean, like Thud Younger said earlier, anybody could be an elf. You should poke that guy in the neck. Ah, uh, I'm going to go do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, no fence is arguing with Rockov. Yes, I, young master, you show great promise in the areas of technology and exploration and so many other things, but you are ill-composed and your behavior and your manners just are going to lose you every job who could hire you. The Troll King is known for his love of etiquette and composure. I don't need <laughs> a job. <laughs> Finger to the throat. <laughs> Sneak <I> attack. <laughs> oh, hey, I should do that sometime. That was great. Clack stands there with a finger in the hobgoblin Nofin's throat. We can see his finger pressing into his golden bronze skin, pressing right into his voice box. Eh, you made him shut up. This is great. I don't know. It, it feels real. Are you an elf? That is a horrible... If you are, Do you, you simply... <laughs> this is entrapment. That's the rule. <laughs> Do you simply walk around asking me? No. Oh, no, that is a serious accusation. Yeah, why don't you get in on him about his etiquette? That is exactly what an elven sorcerer would say. Hm. I am no fins. I am well known to many and all. I have the king's signature. It matches yours just fine. I am no. I will not address further questions. And no fins spins on his heel and walks away. Hey, hey. He's got elven attitude. Hey. I'll give him that. Hey. How do, you, how do you prove somebody's an elf? I'll gladly help you do it. I, I don't want to do this. He just, came, he just came to my junkyard one day and just pulled me out of there. I was perfectly happy. I was working on like six different projects, and then he just made me go see this king guy. I don't care. I feel it. Working for those type of people at the worst. Yeah, I work for myself. He thinks I need money. I don't need money. I look at the expert. How do we prove it? I did my test. <laughs> I've seen them use a, a glamour where they change their face. Could he do that? I haven't seen anything like that. What have you seen him do? Talk. Talks way too much. Yeah, he's an elf. <laughs> Honestly, I, I say we just throw him in the swamp, kill him, be arranged. eliminate the target. Uh, um, as, as much as tempting as that is, um, I'll, just, I'll just say that um, this, uh, this king business... Um, the, the tro trolliness, whatever. We do that, and he's going to send more guys, guys that are even worse to deal with than this guy, because I've threatened him several times, and he said that if I do anything to him, it's just going to get worse for me. So I don't know if that's the best idea. I think if we could expose him, we do it that way. Let's go ask that uh, muscly guy if he has any ideas. Where'd he go? You see, you see Thud Younger is... Laying out in the sun, stretched out, sprawled out, tanning his gray hide, an even darker shade of gray. <laughs> Getting that luscious vitamin C and vitamin D straight to his taint. So, so Rakov walks over, jumps up on the chair, leans directly over his face to block the sun. Hey! Hey, open your eyes! Hey! Hey, you're blocking my sun. That's the idea. I wanted to get your attention. Look... I've had a hard day. Hey, we've all had a hard day. Yeah. Look, look at my face. Not that part. Look over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for you. 
Yeah, you you feel bad for me, all right. Yeah, you look, feel even worse if there was a one of those knife ears hanging around here and you just completely ignored it, wouldn't you? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would. But listen, we're just this little barge. We're moving our stoinks around. No one. Why would a knife ear be on board this? Because they're traveling in secret, obviously. Look, yeah. We 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 th- we th- we think the guy that's with me could be your stowaway. Huh? Could be your stowaway and your elf all at the same time. Wouldn't that be something? All right? We need to know how to make him look like an elf again. Yeah, I remember selling a fair to your master. Hey, but 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 if he's an elf, then you technically didn't sell to the elf. Huh? Come on. Yeah, I didn't sell to an elf. I'd know better. I'd smell him if he was there. All right, fine. That's I, how you can tell, though. Fine. I hope you burn. I'll see you later. They smell all flowery and clean. Do I remember what Nofin smells like? I don't think so. Can I go find Nofin? <laughs> you can. Just take a big whiff, <laughs> get real close to him. As, as Rokov uh, jumps back off the, off the chair, he kicks his leg out and he kind of catches them in the face really quick. Just <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Listen, I'm not going to let you back on this boat. I don't want on this boat anyway. It's fine. Yeah, we got holes in it now. Yeah, I can make a better boat. Glax, you rush over. Are you sneaking over or are you just running over? I'm going to sneak over, but I mean, I'm going to get right up to him. and I need you to make a sneaky, sneaky test. I love your shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of conditioner do you use? You smell like my grandmother. <laughs> oh, That's a five. <clears throat> Lax gets real, real close. He has no trouble sneaking up on Nofins. Gets a deep whiff. Nofins smells really clean. Really clean. Doesn't smell like anybody else on this boat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, I don't know what I would do. Uh, I know what I, I as a player, want to do. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Um, I'm still coiled to your arm. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) And I just, you you see me mouth the words, do it. <laughs> Take him out. <laughs> do it. Bite him. I tackle no fins. What is this? I will have you know, I am unhand me. <laughs> and, then I, and as he tackles him, my blades pop out and I'm an Assassin's Creed, stab him in the neck. <laughs> 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 okay, I need both of you to make <laughs> combat tests for this. Rokov, you see this happening. <laughs> Oh, no. It's a five. Five? I got two successes. Oh, shit. Okaba's blades. Glax tackles him to the ground. Unhand me, sir. This is inappropriate and unexpected. And then suddenly, both of Okaba's knife hands cut across his neck. Are you going for the kill? Yes. Oh, God. Oh, no. I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> I will remove your glamour, foul thing. <laughs> Kushank! <laughs> Okaba's silken cloths get stained blood red as he rips the arteries out of Nofin's neck. And my fabric whips around to look directly at Glax, and the mouth crinkles and says, Okay, now watch quick. As the life drains from his eyes, he will take his natural elven form. and you just watch his eyes glaze over (laughs) there's a long long wait very long well you have have made a dear mistake Rokov walks over and he says I I mean I didn't like this guy but good uh, news is you're free (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure how free I am um uh, oh boy. You don't gotta mess with his trolliness anymore. Uh, alright, uh, uh, just, uh, Hey, what are y'all doing out there? Uh, not, not, nothing, nothing, nothing. Hold on a second. Kick him overboard. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. And really quickly, with amazing speed, Rockov's gonna grab... Shove him in your can. All... <laughs> all of Nofin's stuff. Just <laughs> stuff it in his rags really quickly. Okay, now he can do it. Can... Just push him in the swamp. I'll just chuck him overboard. Oh no, another body. 
This one's missing its arm too, and I cut his arm, <laughs> throw it off real quick. Is that pommel? Oh. <laughs> As Glax lifts the body off the deck, starts to carry it forward over to the railing. He shifts it from one shoulder to the other. He notices it's getting lighter, lighter, and lighter. He hurls it off into the air. It doesn't fall down. It floats up and up, and it disappears in a glitter of sparks. Wait a minute, what was that? He was an elf. He was an elf. He was an elf. It was an elf. I got him. You got that? You got that arm? <laughs> <laughs> Do I? I was, I was gonna chuck it, but do we? Did we get the arm? The arm? Did we get a finger? <laughs> lighter and lighter. And it just disappears and twists the sparks as well. Did you get him? I killed something. I'm not so sure. My hunger for blood is unsated. Rakov hears a voice in his mind that says, Young man, you are in very, very real trouble now. And that is where we will end our session. <laughs> Shit. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Hey everyone, we are Monster Game Night. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Mike, your Game Master, and you have also been listening to... Josh playing Okaba. Ben playing Raka. And Chris playing Glax. Tune in next session. We release an episode every other Monday. Also, if you could check out our exclusive Patreon content, we have behind the scenes, early access, and you can get access to our prequel chronicle. Anyway, tune in next session... Follow us on social media, and I'll do a better outro next time. Bye. Hope you can come to our next Monster, Monster Game, Game Night. Chicka chicka, yeah.